I am Alice of KHR Arts and Cloud Orchid Publishing, and today we are going to talk about my review of Empress by Shan Sa. And again, my apologies if I pronounced that wrong. Here is the person's name right here. The author did an amazing job with this book, y'all. So for those of y'all that don't know much about Chinese history, and I mean, I'm barely scratching the surface with my knowledge as it is, but one of the most famous figures in Chinese history is Empress Wu. And this story is a historical fiction about her life and how she became Empress. Now, to start off, part of how Empress Wu came to be Empress Wu and why she's considered such an influential, amazing figure is that she was one of the rare women who was Empress by herself. This was just such an extraordinary event that, like, never happens. Most of the time, it was the Dowager who ruled alongside an emperor who was a child who was not old enough to be able to rule on his own. The fact that she ruled by herself as essentially emperor is bonkers. And all of the historical events that led up to her being able to do that, a lot of it is kind of up to speculation because Chinese history is very well documented. Don't get me wrong. It's one of the countries that has some of the best documented history in the world. However, there's only so much that was documented about her life prior to her coming to the palace. So a lot of like her childhood and stuff like that is speculated upon, as well as it's kind of that idea of we're not necessarily sure of what is exactly true and what isn't based on the way that Chinese society is in saving face and the way that people are talked about, whether in a good way or a bad way and both and all of that. So it's kind of taking a little from column A, a little from column B, and I just kudos to the author for making this amazing story that just absolutely sucks you in, just page one, and just really gives you the importance of who Empress Wu becomes. So to begin with, her name is Heavenlight. And long before Heaven Light became Empress Wu, she was already seen as this figure who was going places. And we start off the story with Heaven Light is literally a baby. And she is just very much revered by her family and is treated like a boy child, which is very rare. And so she is given all these privileges that a boy child would be given, but at the same time is also expected to learn a lot of the things that a girl child is expected to learn. So stuff about music and dance and poetry and being well-versed in reading all of the historical texts, reading all of the greatest authors at the time, being able to talk about philosophy, just all of that stuff. And essentially she was being groomed to go off to the palace to become one of the emperor's concubines, very much like the concubine's daughter that we talked about in one of my previous reviews. That was the role that she was being groomed for. And unlike the main character in The Concubine's Daughter, Heaven Light very much wanted to go to the palace and be a part of that system. She didn't necessarily so much like want to be a concubine and didn't really like want to be like with the emperor and stuff like that. That wasn't really so much of her goal is that she wanted to be a part of that world. It was very much kind of like the Little Mermaid, I want to be a part of your world. She wanted to escape from her home because growing up as a girl child, you don't get to go outside and experience the world. And she very much wanted to go outside and experience the world. And the best chance she had of being able to do that was to go to the palace. Because if she just got married off to somebody, then she just goes to her husband's house and then just stays there for the rest of her life and doesn't really get to go anywhere and see the world. Going to the palace was going to be the only way that she was going to be able to go out and experience the world. And so she works very hard to become very talented and very smart and very capable because she wanted to be picked to be part of the palace. That was her goal. And she succeeds. She is picked. She gets bought by the palace and she becomes part of, it's called the emperor's gymnasium. So the emperor has just this massive community of all of these women that live at the palace for him. 
And there are different levels, as I talked about in my previous video. There's the concubines. The emperor has typically one to like four wives, depending. But he has multiple wives, and the idea is because the emperor is the emperor, he needs to have as many kids as possible so that he has the most chances of having not just an heir and a spare, but more than that. And especially with because of the way that society worked back then, the chances of assassination and poisoning and just bad stuff happening and illness and accidents and all of that, you needed more than just one or two boys in order to ensure your bloodline. So they needed to make sure they had as many boys as possible. And the best way to do that was to have multiple wives and then also have all these concubines. So Heaven Light had to compete with literally hundreds of women. And again, she didn't really care about being with the emperor. That wasn't her goal. But she did want to move up in the ranks because the more status you had, the more freedom you had. As a very low-level concubine, you don't really have a lot of freedom to do a whole lot. So you're just, again, kind of trapped in a new place and not able to do a lot and go places and stuff like that. So moving up through the ranks was her best shot at being able to do that and have more freedom. And so that was, again, her goal. And she soon realizes, based on seeing what the other women who are already established there, what she needs to do in order to advance. And so two things become very apparent in the story. Heaven Light is incredibly pretty. She's very pretty. And she is incredibly smart. And so this whole that she was given a lot of freedom and kind of raised a little bit like a boy child, but also like a girl child, she also has qualities that the other women there don't because of how her parents raised her. And so this starts to become attractive to other people in the palace. And this is how she starts to raise up in the ranks. And this is how she's able to rise up through the ranks, is that she starts catching the attention of powerful people in the palace based on these more masculine traits. And so to give you a couple of examples, she knows how to ride a horse. That is a very rare thing. Most women do not know how to ride a horse. And she actually knows horsemanship, like actually like riding a horse and like maneuvering a horse and like doing stuff with a horse. And because she's at the palace, as she moves up through the ranks, she's also able to start doing stuff like doing archery from horseback and other stuff like that. And so being able to do stuff like that is very masculine. It is not something that's expected of women. And what normally would be seen as, oh, wow, ick, gross, that is so not feminine and that's very weird and why would you do that? It captures the right people's attention. And so she starts to get attention from some very important people in the palace because of these masculine qualities and they like her for it. And so it's this story of just a lot of interpersonal relationships and status and just kind of how things win you points or lose you points and just the different choices that she makes that helps her along the journey. And the reason why me telling you, you know, she becomes empress like this is not a spoiler is this is a well-known historical fact. This is literally what the story is about is her becoming Empress Wu and becoming this amazing figurehead person in history. The point of the story is how did she get there? How did she become this ridiculously influential person and literally be in charge of the entire country of China. Like, how did she do that? That is wild. And so it's all about the journey with this story. It's not so much about the end because we already know how it ends. And I will let you know, for those of y'all that might not know the story of Empress Wu, it has a very sad ending. It does. So be prepared for that because I wasn't prepared for that because while I knew about Empress Wu's story, I didn't know how it ended. And when I got to the end, it was very upsetting for me because I didn't know it would be so sad. So just to prepare y'all, it is a sad ending. So just so you're prepared for that, I'm not going to tell you how it ends, but it is sad. So just FYI, the story does not have a happy ending. It is a sad ending, but the story is magnificent. The author does such an incredible job of just making this feel so real and feel like you were experiencing everything through heaven light, that you are her and that you're experiencing all these things firsthand. And it is so beautifully written. I am very much a sucker for, I love a very flowery story. Tell me all the details. Tell me all of the beautiful words. It's almost like poetry reading this story. It's so beautifully written. So if you're the kind of author that really likes a really clean narrative, very fast and snappy, this is not the book for you. It's very flowery. We take our time with things. There's a lot of details. It's very rich and wonderful. So that is definitely the type of read that you want to be prepared for for this book. 
but you will be so happy that you did because it is both a very influential cultural experience, but also it is such a beautiful story all on its own. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a like, and if you're new, subscribe. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.